Hey there, how are you? I'm back today again with another Create This Book video. If you're new here, my name is Paula. Welcome, I'm so happy to have you. Today, we are starting right off the bat outside my comfort zone because the first prompt we are going to tackle is Create Realism. And to be honest, I haven't run this way in a long time, so I'm eager to see what happens. I've also decided for this prompt, I'm only giving myself an hour and a half because I wanted to have time to tackle at least two more prompts for today's video. I'm starting by bringing in an extra piece of paper for this drawing. I'm also using this fancy set of pencils that I got for my kids for their art class at school. Another thing I'm using this time is a photo reference. I'm going to tag the name of the artist who took it on the screen somewhere for you. But no worries, the result will definitely not look like the picture, it's just a reference. My skills are nowhere near where they need to be for me to be able to create a copy. And I don't know why, for the first time ever, I thought about drawing a grid on my paper and also on the corresponding photo with my iPad. I start to draw, getting the basic lines for the face in, and as soon as I start drawing the shape of the face itself, I feel the grid is misguiding me more than it's guiding me. And I decided to get off the grid and go more for what I see than trying to match what's inside each square. I finished my base drawing and it's time to go in with the pencils to start the portrait. As I start to add color with the pencils, I still find that the grid is in my way all the time. And I have to erase it and in some places I really feel it's in the way still and I have to come in with a smaller eraser to try to get rid of it. Another thing that I tried for this drawing and failed at was smoothing out the pencil lines with a q-tip. I use the q-tip because I don't have one of those mixing sticks that they use. Is that what you call it? Is it a mixing stick? It's a smoothing stick. I don't know what it's called, but I don't have one. So the Q-tip did not work well either. I carried on and left the filling of large areas for later. I kept finding the grid more uncomfortable than comfortable. I wish I knew how to use it properly, but I don't. So I had to erase it all the time to be able to draw something. And here again, trying to soften the lines from the pencil, tried a little piece of cotton this time, and that did not work either. So I went ahead, erased everything and tried to color even more softly with my pencil to fill those spaces. Here's how much I had drawn when the one hour mark came up. So knowing I only had 30 minutes left to finish this, I thought I would focus on the details of the facial features, like the eyes and the mouth, adding eyelashes, thinking about the shadows and lights um, and all of that. I did notice my mouth was not where it's supposed to be, but I still carried on because at this point I didn't have time to move it. I also focused on adding a lot of shadows everywhere and tried to do a little bit of the drawing for the flowers that were in the picture. I had fun with this prompt, but I definitely now remember why I don't practice realism more to get better. It just doesn't fit my creative personality. The type of commitment and attention to detail this needs, it's just not me. Progress is super slow and hard to notice, and sometimes I just need the satisfaction of stuff getting done. <laughs> but this is it. This is what I made in an hour and a half, and I'm very happy with it. Even though I know a few hours could improve it so much, here's where I'm stopping. And now it's time to varnish it, clean my hands, clean my working surface, and put it into the book. To put it into the book, I first had to fix all of the mistakes I previously made with bleeding on other pages. So for one side, I decided to paint it all with this graphite color acrylic paint that I thought was fitting to go next to the graphite of the pencil. I also changed the metal brad, took it off and replaced it with a paper hinge. I'll see what I do about that blue circle later. Removed the tape from painting, polished it a bit, and I wanted to add a quote here that I thought relevant to the process. Because this is definitely a style in which to be really good at, you have to practice a lot and put a lot of hours in. So in that sense, you really have to do what others won't to be super successful and have beautiful, great portraits. I do think to be good at anything, all you need is practice. 
I'm gluing the portrait on now that the varnish is dry and from now on I'm going to start using this glue in my book because as I learned on my last create this book episode this glue has a little bit more give and elasticity to it so probably this mess with the glue wouldn't have happened if I used this one on the opposite page to glue my little poppy clowns. Let's move to the next prompt on which I still have to fix some bleeding and the prompt reads, create disaster. I am going to take a very dramatic approach to this prompt and use an event that is certainly disastrous, but not in the scale I'm gonna draw it in the book. As an artist, I've knocked the paint water many, many times. And usually when this happens, it feels like there's much more water on the floor and on the table and on everything than there ever was on your paint water container. It feels like it spills on everything so this is what i'm doing i'm drawing a jar that has tipped over and the paint water is going everywhere creating this huge wave i am using my alcohol markers again here to color and because this is paint water i am going to add some pops of color here and there not that this is the way that paint water actually looks but i thought it would be fun to make it colorful instead of a brown mess <laughs> With my drawing all colored and finished, it was time to cut it and put it into the book. So I cut the silhouette out, cut it in half, and here it is in the book. Wait, what are those sticks here? Oh, you thought I was gonna not have an interactive element on this episode? No, 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 this is my thing now. I decided to add to the scene my two little dogs because since they spend so much time underneath my desk, if some paint water falls, it's gonna fall on them for sure, or at least startle them. So I thought this would be a funny and cute thing to add. I've added my pets to the book before and I've sketched them, but I still feel I wanna develop the characters or the way I draw them further. So that's why I'm using them here today too. But this time, of course, they are wearing masks and snorkels to swim through this disaster. I finished drawing and coloring them and added a little puddle to the bottom so they will stay in their place once they're pulled out. I covered them with packing tape, cut them out, and time to put them on this side of the drawing. For that, I needed to draw an extra wave, which was an easy fix, cut it, tested it with the pops, and cut it some more. Pull it and the puddle works perfectly. They're staying where they're supposed to stay. So I glue it into the book. I also printed the prompt again on my labeled printer because I calculated the space wrong and covered it yet again. It's now time to move to the final prompt of the day, which is create a duo. I usually make rough sketches of most of my ideas or concepts first in this little sketchbook. But for this prompt, I don't know why I took the sketch so far, it's almost a finished drawing. So I'm just gonna bring in an extra piece of paper and recreate that drawing here. And as I outline everything, let me tell you what my duo is about. This is Terry, and she is bringing a bunch of raspberries that she is going to very successfully combine with the dark chocolate that her friend Chuck is bringing to the mix. The combination of berries in general and raspberries in particular with chocolate is one that I love so, so much, especially dark chocolate, actually. These days, I find the chocolate I like the most. It's a 60 or 70% dark chocolate. And this wonderful combination is best expressed for me in my most favorite dessert and most favorite ice cream in the entire world, which is, of course, raspberry chocolate ice cream. This treat I cannot get enough of is made by a local shop here in Ecuador. They are called República del Cacao, which is Cacao Republic. They specialize in fine chocolate and have so many varieties of it. And did I just run out to the mall to get this shot of the ice cream? Yeah, yeah, I did. And I think it was the perfect excuse to stop editing and get ice cream today. <laughs> I thought it would be cute to have two little characters showing up for each of these things instead of just drawing the raspberry and chocolate ice cream. 
And as you can see, Terry here is, she's very fancy. She's a girly that accessorizes. She has a raspberry thing on the top of her head. She has a flower on her neck and she's gonna be having little bits of red on her fur everywhere. Chuck on the other hand is a messy little buddy. He's a little bit chubbier than Terry because he eats chocolate all the time and he has whipped cream on his head and that's also drizzled with chocolate and he has spilled some chocolate on his paws and his ear too. Now that my little illustration was fully outlined, all I had to do was clean up the pencil lines and start coloring. I wanted to do the whole thing with markers to be honest, but quickly felt a little bit limited by the quantity of colors, especially the fact that this set does not include red. Seriously, no red? That's just weird. It has pinks and then it moves to these deep burgundies that are not what I was looking for. So I just covered everything in a layer of alcohol markers and then went over all of it with colored pencils. And I feel it was really with the colored pencils that the drawing came together and the characters got their personalities to shine. all colored and done. So now I had the raspberries and chocolate, but I really, really wanted to show the way this combination is best for me. So I'm drawing a third bunny and it's gonna pop up from the middle of the two ingredients. I'm tracing a little bit of the drawing to see how much space I have for it. I noticed that I drew it too small compared to the other bunnies, so I erased that and drew it bigger, which, spoiler alert, was a mistake. Finish this bunny who is eating up the ice cream and appearing on top of it. And again, I outlined them, erased the pencil lines and color him in. Covered it with packing tape and it's time to put everything together in my book. Again, I cut my illustration in half to glue it into the book. This time I do remember to leave the space for the prompt and I'm happy about that. Glued the first side in, and when I was about to glue the other side, I realized I made the bunny way too big. I didn't allow for enough space for it to hide and come out completely, so I had to cut him down. I had to trim his little ears a lot, and I also had to cut most of the cone out. So I don't even know if this still looks like ice cream, but this is the best I could do at this point. I also cut a slit on the illustration where he's popping up and glued that side into place. All of it but the bottom of the page so I could check if the bunny was able to pop up and down. And then I noticed another thing. I forgot to varnish the drawing. And with it being mostly color pencils, it was already smudging. So I took the entire book outside and sprayed it. And here it is back with the varnish. You can somewhat tell there when I'm tilting it how it's still shiny and not dry at all. But I'm running out of daylight to finish filming this. A huge storm is coming and it's getting dark very early. So now I'm in a rush. I didn't care that it was not dry. I popped the bunny in from the bottom and yeah, it's a very tight fit. And I'm also super bothered by the fact that because of the spray varnish, the paper is now transparent and you can see it hiding underneath there. But I'll fix that later. I just glued the page in place and now that the bunny somewhat fits, I cover the bottom by painting on top with some acrylic, which I rush into drying with my heat gun. Redrew some of the lines to make it all fit and unstick some of the pages that were sticking together because I did in fact spray the whole book with varnish. And after that, it looks like it does work and I'm happy with the result. So let's now take a look at everything we made today. We have created realism, and I think it turned out better than I expected with the time crunch. And even with the wrinkles from the other side of the page, I still love that graphite paint with the quote. Here is my create disaster page, and I really, really love this one because it looks very neat. I didn't have as many problems making this one, and I even like the bleed from the other page as a background. I think it looks very, very nice, and this is sort of the way I wish my whole book looked neat and tidy. <laughs> and of course, I love my two little pops coming out from that little wave pocket. 
And the final page I managed to do today is my duo. Two things that are better together, raspberries and chocolate. And I love it. I really, really love Terry and Chuck so much. I hope you enjoyed creating this with me today. I'll see you next week, hopefully, for the Create a National Holiday prompt. I am going to try to bring a Create This Book episode for you every single week. But the way I decided to do it is I'm going to have a regular video every week and then the Create This Book video would be something extra. So my regular videos are going to come out on Fridays and the Create This Book 3 videos will pop up somewhere in the week randomly depending on, I don't know, life, <laughs> work, kids, editing, everything. I hope you're having the most wonderful day. Thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.